Welcome to Faith Like Kitchen. My name is Jenny. During the last few months, I've been busy concentrating on our menus to ensure only the best produce reaches our guests here in Faith Like. It's important to us to be aware of our carbon footprint by supporting local Irish growers and farmers that is sustainable for years to come. To empower our food community by educating ourselves to embrace the past, nourish our present while sustaining our future. So I took to the road to meet some of our suppliers because I feel it's really important to show our guests and chefs where our food comes from. Good morning, Trevor, how are you? Good Jenny, how? And we're surrounded by a few of your friends, shall we say? Yeah, we've lots of hens here on the farm. We have 29 acres of hens, free range hens for producing eggs to supply like to your great hotel below, so we're, we're very lucky. And you said you're great the eggs. We normally get medium eggs in Faith Leg, and it's purely to have a consistent size egg, you know, for baking, so we can actually weigh the eggs. Yeah, that helps us, to be honest. Um, a lot of our work, say, with supermarkets uh, and the markets, it's a large egg we need. Yeah. So we really need the restaurants and the hotels because it's the medium they take. Um, yeah. Normally with the hens, you're going to get a third mediums out of a flock. So for every yeah. 100 eggs, you're going to get roughly 30 are going to be medium. So we need the restaurants and hotels for that side of our business. That's yeah. really important. Do you and do you grade the eggs yourself? Or yeah, we do. Yeah, so we it's have all a, hand on. a separate premises on the farm. So because of that, the eggs go from the hen house straight to the grading shed. Yeah. They're graded in different sizes and then del delivered to all the businesses direct. In fact, like the free range eggs, I suppose, the quality of the egg yolks is uh, second to none. Like, yeah, it you comes can back see to, it. Yeah, yeah, it comes back to the feed, be honest. The feed and water right. are really important. We re use a really high quality grain ration. Okay. Um, so it's wheat, so it's really good yeah. for the hens. And plenty of fresh grass, as you can see, they, yeah. love, they love eating the grass and yeah. the fresh air. It's consistent is the thing. For yeah. you, like quality obviously is really important, so it yeah. has to be consistently good. Yeah. So by delivering twice a week, that makes sure that the eggs are constantly fresh, you know. So Brilliant. It's, yeah, it keeps the eggs at good quality. Welcome to Coffee House Lane, Jenny. Delighted to have you here. I'm thrilled to be here. I love coffee, especially Coffee House Lane coffee. Tell me about Coffee House Lane. We're a family business. We started off about 10 years ago. Myself and my father started it. He's since retired. Wow. But uh, Coffee House Lane, we're a heritage brand and we're all about Waterford and all about coffee. Our kind of signature blend is 1690, which refers to the year that the very first commercial cup of coffee was roasted, brewed and sold in Ireland. And it all in happened. Waterford? All happened on Coffee House Lane. So you roast coffee for Fate Leg as well? We do. Um, and that's probably a combination of... You have your own unique blend. Yeah. So it's your own unique blend that we worked together with yourselves when we yeah. started with you. And it's got your own unique taste profiles in, in, in there in the coffees. But it would be coffee for, primarily from South and Central America. So uh, we work on a, on a mix of a Colombian and a Brazilian coffee. So, you, so talk me through the story of the coffee. When you get it, and what do you do with it? And... How okay. Does it get into a cup of coffee and face. So what we do, we will sample before we buy. We'll sample in some green coffees, as we know it. Uh, green coffee comes into us in big sixty kilogram sacks. So with your particular coffee, we blend them together first, then we roast them. Generally, we bring it to about two hundred degrees, two hundred and ten degrees slowly over about 20 minutes so we use a slow roasting profile rather than a lot of other roasters out there will roast rapidly over about 10 to 11 minutes what's the difference uh, we just think you get a lot more control over the coffee over okay. what's happening inside in there and there's, there's no dangers of burning the coffee there's no dangers of going too fast our bean at the moment, I suppose, our fate like busy bean, it's uh, flying with coffee. Yeah, so yeah. we're, and we look, we even get compliments back in here. I said, people people know that it's our coffee is out there and they're giving us compliments and they're going, you know, we can produce a good cup of coffee, but yeah. it can be easily ruined during service. So the lads are out there who are making the coffee out there. Yeah. So we did a bit of training with our lads who are doing the training Brilliant. and, you know, they, they've been exceptional out there. So the may continue. I said, we're loving the coffee industry in Waterford at the Brilliant. moment. Brilliant, and thank you for supplying fate like. No, and thank, thanks for buying our product. Thank thanks for supporting us, the, the local support is fantastic for us. Yeah. Paul. Jenny, how are you? Great, great. God, you have some set up here. Barefoot Farm looks fabulous. Where did the name Barefoot Farm come from? Well, when we started up this business, we were struggling for a name. And we were on a walk in the gardens up in Carlo one day and I took off my shoes and I was walking with my bare feet in the grass. You know, and I said, oh my God, it felt lovely. So why don't we go with Barefoot Farm? Great, great. And how long are you in business, Paul? Uh, we took over the field in 2018. 
we didn't start selling until November that year. Is this a passion you've always had, Paul? Always wanted to grow, yeah. Always wanted a polyton. Well, wow. Just to grow tomatoes. How many do you have now? Uh, we've seven of our own and two are leasing, so... Well, wow. Why don't you sell the heads? Uh, look, the heads you have to keep them in the bed longer, you know, staying longer. Yeah. And then you cut them and you just sell them once, you only get... Yeah. You know, where we can pick that leaf for up to eight weeks, every week for up wow. to eight weeks. So, you know, it's given That's brilliant, because in feed, like, we'll, um, normally we used to buy the heads. Right. But they used to wilt so quickly. Yeah, You yeah. know, especially in the summer and um, with the heat and this, that and the other. Right. So, the lettuce now, it's just crisp all the time. Well, we pick the lettuce really, really early, you know. And so. you, you give us mixed leaves. So how do you pick what goes in where, into the bags? Is there a variety just, that you love? You just go by a bed. Okay, yeah. It's just, you know, as Fiona always says, you never get the same bag twice. Like yeah. So I, I harvest off this bed yesterday. Yeah. And we're going over to this one the next day. It's just different leaves. So we have about 11 different type of lettuce. But yeah. as you can see, in a bed I can only fit a certain amount. Certain amount. So you can tell, you can tell me the lot number my lettuce comes exactly. from? Exactly. I can tell you what bed it came in, what section, as in, in between the two posts. You know, wow. So when bed. you get a plate of salad and fate, like, you can tell me exactly the plot of land that it came from? You tell me the sell by date on the bag of that lettuce, I can tell you where it came from. That's excellent. Yeah. That's brilliant. I can tell you what seed was in it and compost the whole lot. Like, you know? Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Thanks very much for your time, no Paul, and best of luck. Brilliant. Thank Take you. Take care. Hi Jenny, welcome to our small farm here where we breed our purebred artisan Dexter beef. So you're very welcome. Your animals look unreal. Yeah. They're so healthy looking, they're so, and they're grass fed all year round? Yep, yeah. so we, we grass feed all year round, we don't feed, we've no meal inputs. <clears throat> um, behind you, you have um, 10 cows just recently after calving. Um, as they are all purebred, we have our own stock bull and, and grass fed. Brilliant, brilliant. Why Dexter beef? And what is Dexter beef? Okay, well, Dexter is a native breed here to Ireland. Um, I got into them um, in 2017. Um, I run a herd of about 50 cattle now. Um, Dexter beef, um, it's the real value of Dexter beef is well, one, being totally grass fed, and two, the lovely marbling effect in the meat. And for someone like yourself, uh, chef, yeah. the head chef of a Fate Leg House Hotel, um, you will find the amazing flavour and taste. That's why we have it on the menu in Fate Leg. It's just the, the marbling effect of the meat is just second to none. And <coughs> you have marsh, marsh animals as well? It's the Wexford yeah, slobs? We have, we, we have, I've just recently um, obtained some land down on the slobs. Uh, there's um, 17 acres of land down there um, and I share that with the geese in the winter time. Brilliant, so, yeah. brilliant. And what's the difference with the land down there? Is that, that's wet and boggy, is yeah, it? Yeah, well, in the winter time it, 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 it would hold more groundwater. So okay. um, in the winter time it's not, it's not ideal for for grazing but it's great grass great grassland for, for growing grass so for our we will start in next year um, our growing our silage down there it all has to be reseeded um, and from then on then that will be um, our silage grounds and we we'll keep all our grazing here well thanks Mick and thanks for your time today and um, thanks for your wonderful beef for Faith Lake Jenny you're very welcome it's been an absolute pleasure having you here with us thanks Thank you. Hi Nick, I'm thrilled to be here. Hi Jenny, it's coming. Yeah, great. Uh, what fancy fun guy. But what a wonderful, wonderful company. Uh, we've been dealing with you now for 10 years, is it? At least 10 years, yeah, I say that. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. brilliant. We're delighted to be able to um, support you and your mushrooms. So how many different types of mushrooms do you do, Nick? We grow the grey oyster, we grow golden oyster, we grow pink oyster, we grow shiitake, and we grow one called um, foliota. Wow. So and what's your most popular? Grey oyster. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it's the easiest one to grow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see because um, it takes from start to finish, from adding the spawn to the uh, compost, it probably takes somewhere around six to eight weeks before you get fruit. Right. With shiitake, you're talking 18 to 20 weeks. So you've got to manage those, that compost for that long and heating and lighting and humidification. That's why the shiitake are more expensive than the grey. Yeah. So do you introduce the spawn into the. We used to, yeah. Plant? So that's, that's the way it works. You end up with a. It's called a substrate, which is basically the, um, the straw and the sawdust. Yep. Um, that's sterilised with heat with steam. Okay. And once that's sterile, you add the spawn to it. 
Okay, so then it's completely, there's nothing else that Yeah, you don't want other it. bacteria or other funguses taking over. Yep. It gives, us, gives them, um, the spawn a chance to grow and develop. And you deliver to Fate like uh, once a week? Once a week, yeah. Brilliant, yeah. yeah. Uh, every Wednesday. Yeah. And do you have a, a um, I suppose, you have a good load of people in Watford you're supplying? Wexford, I have a good few selected, yeah. selected restaurants and uh, retailers who we, we deliver to. Brilliant. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's good. It's good fun as well. It's good. It's nice when you go into a place uh, like your place and you walk in the chef see you know beautiful colour bunch of mixed mushrooms. Yeah. Like, wow, you know, because yeah. they're so vibrant when they're you know when they're fresh and they're, yeah, you know, it's lovely. Yeah, because they do. They they really hold the colour, don't they? Yeah. 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 It's a Brilliant. So thanks, Nick. Thanks no for your time, um, and thanks for all your wonderful mushrooms, and thanks for supplying Fate like for so long. Yeah, thank, well, you. thank you. Thank you.